for me, it looked like the creation of religion, and it looked like false idols, which I guess it, it's that would be one way of looking at fame, which is false idolship. Movies don't have to be easy, because Lord knows that watching this movie twice in order to make this video was more than enough. But I know that there are people who see movies that are a bit too weird or maybe too dark and they notice that some people boo and there's a couple people that leave and they may think that that signifies that it's a bad movie, but that's not always the case. Just as long as there's a reaction. I mean, I don't like that people boo. I'm not a masochist, but I like, um, I, I, I want a reaction from people. Personally, I'm not watching this movie again for a while. But what I will give it is that I'm still thinking about it and I want to talk about it. And I know that there are a lot of people who came out confused. Some people came out angry. So I want to break it down and signify what it means just plain and simple right off the bat. The movie is about mother nature. The house they're in signifies earth. The people who invaded are humanity. And Javier is playing God who loves to create things from Genesis to apocalypse that ends up killing mother, implying that what God has done with the story of earth He's just gonna move on to the next one. I wanted to make a film about Mother Nature. I wanted to make a film from her perspective. So yeah, it's some pretty deep stuff. And even though this is like the main message that's going on in the movie, because that's what they have said it is, there is two other allegories, two other metaphors that people have been noticing, which I'll get to, but I want to focus on the main one because he said he wanted to make a movie on the perspective of Mother Nature, even going as far as tweeting out The Giving Tree as pre-reading homework before you go watch the movie because it's all about the earth that keeps on giving while we keep on taking. So you can see from the beginning of the movie, which is really the ending of another story, which we'll get to, but it starts off with the house being burnt and there is a different woman, but then it all gets rebuilt. So we know that Bardem is playing God because in the credits, not only is he referred to as him, but his name is the only one in the credits, not just the cast, the entire credits that is capitalized. On top of that, they um, they keep referring to him as the creator. A quick note, just to make sure for those of you, I'm not saying or imposing any religious belief or ideology. I'm just trying to relay what Aronofsky said or is trying to say in this movie. And if you don't know, this is coming from the dude who made Noah, all about rock monsters and some crazy stuff. So you know, his retellings of the Bible aren't really like your standard Sunday school stuff, but that doesn't mean that he's not fascinated by the Bible. And that doesn't mean that this man hasn't studied the Bible because this dude goes deep into it. Originally, the working title for the movie was Day Six, which is a biblical reference to the day in which God created man in Genesis. Before man comes in though, you have Mother, who's a mix of Mother Nature, kind of the Holy Spirit, the Virgin Mary, pretty much the caretaker who gets completely abused. We see that with the Paradise, AKA Eden, that she herself has been trying to create in this house when boom, a man shows up. This man would represent Adam because not only is he lonely, but there is literally an insert that we see in the movie where he has bruised ribs because boom, that's where Eve would come from after he speaks with God and he grants him the partner and he's no longer lonely. Eve here is always snooping around, which is interesting because Pfeiffer herself said that she played Eve as the temptress who's always curious and is very persuasive. And as we see in the Bible, she eventually ends up eating the forbidden fruit and getting kicked out of paradise. Just like in the movie, she breaks that crystal she wasn't supposed to touch and they're both sent away. Just like in the Bible, that's when the children appear. And if you know anything about Cain and Abel, you know that the older brother kills the younger brother out of jealousy. And Cain himself even gets marked on his forehead, which they do in the movie as well. Interesting note, the actors are also brothers in real life. So that's interesting. From there, the world starts to multiply and more people pollute the house, just like they do earth. And the more damage they do, the more that the earth gets affected. Keeping with that biblical timeline, however, it isn't until the pipes break causing a flood to happen that the earth then gets reduced and the people go away. At this point, things seem to be peaceful and they even decide to have a kid, which is what sparks him to have an idea for his next project. That he not only finishes, but becomes such a huge success that everyone, including their mother, comes to see him. Now, he doesn't show you what he wrote, but you know that it's writing. And this is writing from a creator that connects to his people who then want to come see him. 
In other words, it's a metaphor for the Bible. More so, I think it expands on the idea that Aronofsky is going for and where he's really trying to see God, the creator, as just like man, um, when man creates something and he doesn't really know what he's doing, sort of trial and error. And he's trying to say that God is sort of like that, that he sparks up with ideas. Just like here, he gets the idea to create the story once his wife is pregnant. And he's kind of saying that God kind of created the New Testament. That's when he got the idea of what to do with humanity, us, the characters in his story. Once he realized that he can make the gospel and kind of tell the story through Jesus. Again, this is what he's saying. This is where things get crazy and even kind of turns into children of men and where they start packing more people into that house than a Mexican black party. But if you're paying close attention, you notice how it's the story of humanity and the evil in society advancing and where we declare and abuse this earth as ours just because the creator said to share even though the earth isn't ours, where people start fighting over land because they claim it to be theirs, where people start worshiping with idols and they proclaim that he hasn't forsaken us when they see a glimpse of God, where the creator puts ashes on his followers, where they literally start worshiping stains, all things that they kind of do in real life. We then see wars, riots, crimes, Kristen Wiig appears and she's credited as the Herald or God's messenger who relays his wrath upon the people. All of these jacked up stuff continues to tear down the house until the Prince of Peace is born. That's when everyone calms down and they even bring the baby gifts. Now, this is where a lot of people left the screening and they were not having it because while it is a metaphor about how God wants to give his son to the people and at first they accept him and then they end up murdering him, it's a little bit different when you see it done to a baby, especially when you consider that, you know, Jesus gets sacrificed. But when you see a mutilated baby, it's a bit different. It's a bit different when you see mass being a representation of consuming the flesh and blood of Jesus, as opposed to seeing people um, eat a child. As you can guess, when this happens, mama has enough and she starts fighting back, which interesting to note, when she stabs people, random thunder noises can be heard in the background, which I thought was a cool little thing to add in there, signifying the natural disasters that come upon Earth when she starts to bring her wrath, as opposed to what you hear when they try to punch her, which is like random fireworks in the background. Even crazier, Mother Nature exacts her revenge by using the lighter that she demanded not be used in the house and ends up setting the whole house on fire with oil, which, you know, oil and spills and what we see all the time with gas and you get the point. She exacts her revenge and pretty much kills everyone. However, even though everything is destroyed, she keeps on giving to the point that she even releases her heart to him. And it's implied that when our story on earth here is done, when the whole story of creation from Genesis to apocalypse and we're all done and over, that then he's gonna start over and tell another story with another, I guess, set of humans in another world, but that mother nature isn't going to be Jennifer Lawrence. It's gonna be Alicia Vikander. So whether you see it as God working with different dimensions or multiple, you know, parallels, whatever it is, a cycle, that's allegory one, all about mother nature, making sure you don't abuse it, and God being a creator. Everyone can identify if someone comes over your house and throws a piece of garbage on your floor or burns a hole in your carpet with their cigarette, but they don't understand when they throw a piece of paper out on the street. Allegory number two is then that of a creative and where I kind of see it as Aronofsky's subconscious kind of spilling through the page because he said that he wrote this in five days, meaning that everything that was in his mind was just flowing out and he just started, you know, writing anything that came to him. So I kind of see it as he's a creative, Bart M's character is a creative. He takes his time and wants to make sure everything's perfect. So does Bart M's character. My boy over here has dated some of his co-stars that he's worked with and he has pushed them to the edge, making sure that he can get everything out of them, making sure that they give him his all the same way that Bardem does to Mother. And really in a sense, he's the, well, he's calling himself God and kind of comparing again, God to be more of a man type person who makes mistakes and is just trying to figure out what story he wants to tell. So I truly believe that's kind of subliminally there in the, the story of a creator and how that ends up affecting how we deal with fame, how we deal with the creative process, how we deal with our loved ones and how they have to deal with the pain and how that brings neglect and abuse. There's a bunch of different things and you know other ideas and depending on your own story of your own life, you may relate to it in a different way because it's one of those artsy movies. But I think that regardless of how you look at it, if, if you see the themes of the Bible, if you see the themes of the environment, if you connect with the themes of it being a relationship, there's one thing that ties all of those together. 
and that's to respect your mama. guys for checking out this video there was a couple of other notes that i had uh one of them being you know the whole perspective of the mother that was really cool to note that everything is from the mom's perspective like there's literally only three shots it's like a medium shot over the shoulder of her her point of view and like it's all practically close-ups i also think it's interesting if you notice it when you watch the movie that all the sound is from her perspective so if she looks away like the sound just becomes a super echoey um one other thing that I did not catch, you know, and if there's any other theories that you guys have, definitely let me know down below. I have all the interviews also in there because I, I I always get the thing that people said that I'm wrong, um, which is cool, but what I stated was kind of all from the director. So all those interviews are there, but there's one thing that I just can't figure out. And that is that orange powder. I don't know if it's like supposed to be apple cider vinegar, if she's drinking Tang. I have no idea what it is, but that's the one thing he says he won't admit to. That's the one thing I won't answer. So if you know what that is, definitely let me know down below in the comments section. But other than that, let's discuss this movie. Let me know what other movies you want me to cover, music, anything else. Until next time, I'll see you guys later.